It's jammed up on one side and it's got a gap on the other. Yeah. Right? And it's and, tight. And it's, yeah, it's tight. So we're gonna talk a little bit about using a Metabo, because there's a lot of people in the comments that like that way. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about how I usually do it. You know, everything's, I've used a Metabo before and that, it works. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got Austin back with me and he's about to weld this piece of pipe, these coupons, and he tacked it up where it's pretty large. Well, it's not large for you plant guys at like a 332 gap, but you know, we don't use, I'm usually running something about like that. Something where I can just skate a bit in it, and move on to the next one. If you want to sit there with your three, your one eighth and a 332 gap and step it all the way up to the top, I'm going to be on to the next joint. Pipeline and plant works, two different things. But keep in mind, you have got to do whatever the inspector wants, right? I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Hey, what do you want? Okay, that's what I'll do. But today we're going to be addressing whether we should use a Metabo blade or a cutoff wheel to open that up. This side's even worse. It's jammed up pretty tight. It's touching in some spots, it's touching right there. And we're just gonna practice both sides. We're gonna grind one side with a grinder, like I like to thin it out, you know, uh, soften the bevel. We're gonna weld one side like that. And then we're gonna gut the other side out with the Metabo and let you decide what you wanna do. You know what I like to do, uh, but to each their own, and we're gonna talk about all the tips and tricks along with it. So please hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. If not for me, do it for Austin, because he <laughs> is spending his own time out here helping me and welding on the side. So, let's tack this baby up here where we can get a good, clear shot right there. My lens is going out. Is doing that flickering thing? So, Maybe you need a... Tafui! Tafui! Check out Tafui, it'll be in the comments. My new favorite, <laughs> my new favorite lens. All right guys, we're gonna use a 1 8 grinding disc on this side to soften the bevel. And on this side, we're gonna use a Metabo disc to gut it out and see which one of you guys like the best. Real quick, we're gonna grind that because I know what's gonna happen. It's not ground deep enough. See, that's gotta get down. That's gotta get, it needs to be a really good ramp all the way to there. Please don't grind in here, it'll just cause you trouble. Alright Austin, is this side good or does it need more? I think Tell it's good. me. Think it's good? I think it's good. I would definitely grind it more. You know why? You see that? There's a lot of meat. On the outside of the pipe. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to get down in there, so go ahead and get us a nice ramp right there. These tacks, so these starts and stops are where most people have their trouble. So just spend a little bit of time on them, and especially when you're getting started, and it'll help you out later. Go ahead. He's asking if we should do more. See how that side of the bevel's tore up? Yeah, it's, you're, you, you see it down in there? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and get that down. Quick tip. I've had a lot of helpers. Oh man, you did that, you screwed that up. Oh man, look. See how much you grinded down in the, in the bevel? Oh, See, this is a big no-no right here. We're gonna have all kind of trouble right there now. So, remember, only grind that tack. That is it. 
But when you're grinding this and you're just barely, you just barely, barely on it. So when you're grinding pipe, especially the bead, and you're just barely grinding on it, uh, it'll put a glaze on that, and it won't cut nothing. It's crazy. You'd be like just grinding and nothing be happening. So what I've had to do before is you can get a file. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get one for you. Right, get your grinder stand out, which should already be out. And this is not a mustache. I'd be surprised people that say that. But, so let's say this grind disc is glazed over really bad. It has a little bit of glaze on it. Uh, not bad. It's really not that bad, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna try to show you how to clean it up because it will happen, especially if you're grinding some really hot stuff and you're letting the RPMs really rip and you're just barely touching it. It'll get hot, glaze over, and this is how you fix it. What you're gonna wanna do is take your file and just, just peck it. You wanna just gnarl it up, not, don't beat the crap out of it, but you see how I'm just, I'm breaking that scale up. Okay, now this thing will cut like a brand new one. It'll rip some metal out of there. Now to keep it from happening, I'm gonna show you the next tip. When you go to grind, grind like this. Done. That's what you want. You wanna eat it out, get away from it. If you're grinding like this, make it real easy. Making it real easy, it will glaze that wheel over. Now, let's put a bead in it. Is it raining? It's starting to. This is the side that we ran the Matabo in. And one thing right off the bat that I see, it's really hard to see it, but there's just a dead stop right there. Make sure we try to get that all the way out. This land is going to be huge now. So you're going to want to take your grinding disc and go ahead and, and get that. If you'll grind the bevel just a little bit, it'll get that land where it's not so heavy. And this bottom's huge, so we're going to turn him way down for that. But this side that we did with the grinder is ready to go. All you got to do is weld it. You don't have to do all that other stuff. This is why I choose to use a grinder, soften it up, and then I'm done. Guys, on this side, uh-oh, it's raining on our project. Um, so I'm going to turn him to three and three quarters on a vantage, and that should be pretty close. Go ahead. So Austin just got through with his piece, and I'll show you that in just a second. But I asked him, what, what side did you like better? And then we're gonna talk about why this is. And I'll even talk about making repairs with a Metabo. A lot of people wanna cut, the, cut out you know, a, a spot that's not good and then put the bead back in it with a Metabo. But I don't do it like that because I learned these tricks early. But what did you think about uh, the grinded side compared to the cut side of Metabo? I favored the side that was grinded. It was way easier to handle. Uh, didn't have to really do anything to adjust to it. It was it went way smoother. Okay, and you didn't have to go get your matabo. You didn't have to, you know, make sure everything was, you know, because you've disturbed all of it with a matabo. Now, if that's the way you like to do it, just fine. Everybody welds different. But when it comes to repairs, a lot of people want to grind into where they, you know, where they think because sometimes you can't see. To where they think the problem is with the Metabo blade. But here's the thing. If you do that, you're creating more problems for yourself and you don't know exactly where it is. You could be Metaboing the wrong spot. If you soften it and you go back in with that 6010, it will open up wherever the problem is. Wherever it's low, it'll open up. Sometimes it'll just wink at you. Sometimes it'll, you know, you, it'll open up and you can push it on in and it'll look just like uh, you, you know, didn't have a problem. Um, but let me turn, flip the camera around and show you what his weld looks like. Now this is not his best. And we'll get into 
why in just a second. All right, guys, Austin put the bead in here and I was not here to operate the heat box. And he uh, had some issues on the bottom. And I asked him, I was like, hey, what happened? <laughs> and you said what? I was just trying to finish. He was just trying to finish. I got in a hurry and didn't feel like fooling with it and I fought it. Okay, so here's the takeaway. When you know it's not going in, stop. It's so much easier to fix. If you just stop, turn your heat down, whatever you have to do, stop, grind. Just as soon as you see it spitting back, if it's too tight, or the keyhole's humongous, if you keep going and you just try to put something in there, you're just gonna make it worse. So just hold up, assess the situation, turn it down, do whatever you gotta do, because this is not even close to what he's been doing, but it started to rain. I wasn't here. Um, Jose was like, it's raining on my paint. <laughs> so I had to go take care of that, but uh, we can all learn something every day. Now, I think we might try to fix it in the next video, but that's gonna be a chore. This, this would be just a do-over, a cut out and do-over uh, normally. But guys, if you're just starting welding, subscribe, like the video, because I'm gonna make stuff like this all the time and you're gonna learn something just about every video. And for you older guys that are here and been doing it forever, thank you for being here and thank you for your comments. It means a lot. I have had the armchair welders coming out of the woodwork since I started doing shorts. And on top of that, I've been having an <laughs> editor do them that's not a welder. So some of them don't make complete sense. But instead of going to watch the video, they just gripe in the comments. It's crazy. You know what happened there? All right, Austin is done and that's his cap. Everybody wants to look at the top. Just look at the bottom. Hey, it's getting better. Uh, what do you think's wrong? First thing I see. First thing. Mm, I got a bunch of... No. Those are, those are grinding marks. They're going to gripe at you about that. That's a bad habit. Well, my lens was. Oh, Check his my, lens. Okay. I had to borrow your tafui. You know, you're going to make a good welder. <laughs> you've already got really good excuses. <laughs> no, it's come a long ways, and... But I would say just a, you know, a little bit of undercut, grinder marks, and just some loose wrinkles. And you're not welding with the newest rods either, so that's going to get better. So, perfect. Good job. <laughs> no. Just keep it up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's practice. Practice, yeah. practice, practice. Like burn rods until you're sick of burning rods. <laughs> and then burn some more. Have an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you in the next one later.